Hi, I'm Liz, the Gorilla Carmouche. I'm out of San Diego Combat Academy here in what is not sunny San Diego, California. <laughs> Um, I fight for the 135 Bantamweight division. I absolutely respect Ronda. I mean, if it wasn't for her, I don't think that women's MMA would be going into the UFC. She's done, people can, can be all against her for how she went away with her performance with Misha Tate and building that up and, and the hype and the, the disputes back and forth on Twitter and on Facebook. But the reality is they brought the drama that was needed to, to build a fan base to support women's MMA and to bring it to the UFC. So I respect her for that. You can't hate someone that follows through what they do. When it comes to stepping in that cage, I respect her until we step in there and then we're not friends anymore. <laughs> I hope I'm the number one contender. I've been uh, definitely been pushing for it on Twitter and trying to get the fans to uh, support and then show that they want it as well. And so far it looks that way, but that's just myself and fans. We don't necessarily know that that's gonna happen. I'm 2-0 this year and I, I train nonstop and I think that everybody's had a go at her. So far she, she's managed to put her way through everybody and, and finish them. And I wanna have a chance to, to give a my go and see if I can't finish her as well. Uh, it's kind of a joke with uh, with Rhonda saying that, you know, she's uh, she's been bred for this and her mom would wake her up doing it. So I gotta play catch up now. You know, I don't, I don't have a mom that's gonna wake me up and armbar me, so I just gotta have teammates that I'll be walking the randomly decide they're just gonna jump my back and armbar me. Or I'm in practice sitting there because we're supposed to be taking, paying attention and somebody jumps my back and arms bar me or pushes me over and does whatever they can. So it's that constant defense so that I can play catch up and I'm ready for it because ultimately that's where I wanna be is going against her for the title. So I have to be prepared for what she's gonna put forth and that's usually arm bars. I, she's not a person to power out of. I mean, uh, when we brought anybody, if, I go against the huge guys that are 205, 215, 225. You can try and power bomb them, and even if you can pick them up, usually they're strong enough to extend the extend the arm and still get the arm bar. So we know with her that's not going to work. So I have to do traditional escapes or just not get caught in it in the first place. You, you can't be scared of it. You have to know that it's going to come. So there has to be mental preparation for it, but not fear that it's inevitable. And I think that's what people are thinking. Well, I'm going to get caught. It's going to happen. Well, don't let it get caught. Don't let it happen. Know that it's a strong possibility, so don't let it happen. You know, I had, a, I had a chance once against Marlowe's and uh, short notice, 10 days, and I managed to make it four rounds, dominating the fight completely. I may have lost, uh, but it was a learning, a learning experience for me, and I come back stronger than ever, showing that that's not gonna hold me back ever. I've learned from those experiences, and I'm only gonna get that much better. So that in mind, I'm ready, and I'm willing to show and then I'm that much better and I'm ready for a championship bout again. To be a champion and to be a fighter, if you want to be a successful fighter, you can't take those breaks. You see, I see people who are like, yeah, 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 I'll train when my fight comes up. That You can't train when your fight comes up. You can't focus on one person. Things change, so what happens? You have a bout lined up and then last minute, two weeks out, you decide that you're just gonna give up because your your opponent changed. No, you have to be ready for anybody and everything in every situation. So I train nonstop all the time. My diet isn't crazy so that I'm not, that person is like, oh, I gotta cut 25 pounds. I'm not gonna cut 25 pounds. That dedication has to be there. This is a lifestyle. This isn't just a, oh, okay, I'm gonna do what I want to. This is a way of life and you have to, either embrace it and accept it and go with it or realize that it's gonna be short lived. It's funny that you say that because uh, we did, we looked up some research studies and found that for men, obviously we all know, if men have sex, they lower their testosterone. Uh, for women, we found it, it's kind of split with it. But for the most part, we're gonna go in favor of having sex does raise, uh, lower your estrogen and raise your testosterone. And that's absolutely, I have that same game plan. And I do it before every fight. So it's been working for me too. So I support her decision to do that because it works for me as well. I know, I have my girlfriend, she's there at every fight, ready to go. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 she knows. We have our set day of fight routine, day before fight. No, it's, it, there's a set routine going into it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, team Lisbo started off like, like most things. Team Hurricane Awesome, Team Lisbo, uh, Team Dyke Force. It's all my coach Manny's doing. He, he's the one that brings everybody together. It started within our own house with trying to just get as many dykes and lesbians and the gay community support. And then we decided to branch it out to the fan base and make a, a whole Lisbo following. And they show the most support. I mean, they're, whenever we ask for anything, if we ask for a retweet for them to help me get, get me into the UFC, get me against um, going for Dana White, to get me against Ronda, they're there supporting me. Uh, the, fan the Lisbo fan bases is, is strong and I, I can't say thank you enough to them without them. I wouldn't be hopefully going into the UFC. Yeah, uh, Manny is, is our coach of Team Hurricane Awesome of Awesomeness. Um, and uh, he's a great coach. When, when you need that pressure to get back into the cage and uh, to do one more round, he's there. When you need the support, when you need that hand to lift you up, 
encouragement. He's there for anything. I can give him a phone call any, any time of the day, and man, he's there for me, and I know that. So I trust him, and I don't trust many people, but I do. And when we're backstage and we need that, just to not focus on the fight for a little bit, just get a little bit of a break, there he is, cracking jokes, doing craziness, tattooing crazy stuff on his body. He's a, he's a great guy. He's always a small when you need it, always there, keeping things light and keeping things crazy. There's a, Hurdles that I've overcome in my life, adversity that's helped me grow, that's mentally made me stronger, physically made me stronger than most people have ever faced. And that's helped me more than anyone else I've ever seen. And people aren't going to go through what I've gone through. So that definitely puts me in a position to be physically and mentally stronger than most. And I think that's going to help me a lot against Ronda Rousey because she hasn't experienced the difficulties in my life that I have, and she never will. Uh, if I was talking to Dana White, I'd tell him that uh, he put it out a long time ago that uh, for, for fighters, if they ask for a fight, if they ask for a title, we give them that opportunity. And I've been putting it out there for a long time, asking it, requesting it. I backed it by winning two fights in a row with strong finishes, and I hope to do the same. So make me a part of history. I want to be a part of history in the UFC, fighting against Ronda Rousey for the first women's bout ever in the UFC. I hope you consider me, and know that I'm just going to keep bothering you till it happens.